Today, as we continue our renewal series, uh, we want to discuss renewing our zeal. But what is zeal? What does it mean to be zealous, especially in the context of being zealous for God? In the New Testament, the word for zeal is zealous, uh, which according to Charles Concordance uh, means to have warmth of feeling for or against, to be zealous or jealous. And really this word carries the idea uh, that feelings are boiling within uh, in us. Uh, kind of imagine a, a pot of boiling water that these feelings are boiling inside, that we are passionate, we're full of energy. Um, you know, this is what we are to be uh, for God. We're to be in, enthusiastic, passionate, uh, just full of life. And so we are to have a zeal for God, a zeal for his word, a zeal for his people, a zeal for doing good. We're to be zealous for God. So today, and trying to help us renew our zeal, I want us to turn over to Titus chapter 2 and verse 11 through 14. I think this passage is going to help us focus our attention today on several things that will help us renew our zeal. Titus chapter 2, verses 11 through 14. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our a great God and Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works. Now, I know when we all listened to this, that we heard there in that very last uh, verse, in verse 14, it said the word zealous. They were talking about zeal, being zealous for, for good works. But I want us to really consider this whole reading today um, as we consider different ways in which we can uh, renew our zeal, renew our zeal for God. And first, I want us to consider that in order to renew our zeal, we need to remind ourselves of God and of his love. I want us to turn back to Titus chapter 2 and verse 11. So for the grace of God that brings salvation uh, has appeared to all men. Do we remember this about God. Do we remind ourselves continually that we serve such a good and awesome and wonderful God that before the foundations of this world, God had a plan. God had a plan to redeem mankind. God had a plan to save us from our sins. That should be so exciting news. That should be something that we think about on a constant basis um, and think about the love that God had and, and the salvation that he has provided John chapter 3 and verse 16, he demonstrated his love by, by, by sending his son, by giving uh, us Jesus uh, so that we would have an opportunity to be redeemed, so that we would have an opportunity to uh, be saved. And he talks uh, more about this in Titus chapter 2 going down to verse 14. So who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people. And so we think about this, that it's not just the father that was, that was uh, loving, the son was loving too. And in fact, we look at Romans chapter 5 and verses 1 through 11, and we see the outpouring uh, there once again of the love of God and how that Christ Jesus, how he died for us, how he died for us while we were still sinners, and how amazing that love truly is, that by the, the death, burial, and resurrection, that we now have an opportunity to come to God, to have our sins washed away, to be cleansed, to be purified from all those evil and wicked things of this world. And so we need to remind ourselves of the love of God. You know, we remind ourselves of that new life that we are to be living in Romans chapter 6 uh, and verse 4. We need to remind ourselves that, that as Christians, as those that have been purified, those that have put on Christ in baptism, that Christ has added us, uh, you know, to the church. That says there in Acts chapter 2 and verse 47, that the Lord adds to the church daily those that are being saved and that we are his own special people, uh, Titus chapter 2 and verse 14, and we're supposed to be zealous for good works. So in thinking of this today and how can we can renew our zeal, let's first and foremost, let's just remind ourselves of the God that we serve, of his love, of, of his uh, awesome power and all that he has done for us. Let's also, in an effort today to renew our zeal, let's also reject ungodliness and worldly lust. Let's go back there to Titus chapter 2, starting there in verse 12. It says, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly 
lust. That if we really want to be a child of God and be zealous for him, then what do we have to do? Well, we have to reject ungodliness and worldly lust. We had to reject it uh, before we uh, became Christians, before we put him on in baptism. Uh, we had to decide who we were going to serve. Were we going to serve God or were we going to serve man and the world and sin? Well, we made a choice. So we had to reject those evil things and put those things away from us that we cannot allow those desires to continue ruling our life because when we sin, we are lured and enticed by our own desires. James chapter 1 and verse 14. And we think about, you know, all those desires and we think about uh, 1 John chapter 2 and verse 16 that talks about, you know, the sins of the, of the flesh, the eyes and pride and all these things and how they influence us so much and how they impact our lives. We cannot allow those sins to be a part of us anymore. We cannot allow those things like the, the works of the flesh found in Galatians 5, verse 19 through 21. We can't allow those things to be part of our lives as Christians. We are to reject ungodliness and worldly lust. And Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 11 says we're to take no part in those things. And it goes on even farther and says we are to expose them, that we are to call sin what it is and to keep ourselves apart from it. Because our purpose here in this life is to serve God. We are to people like Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33 that are seeking after, you know, God's kingdom, seeking after his righteousness. You know, that is the way that we are to live as Christians. And so if we want to renew our zeal today, let's reject uh, the worldliness and the reject ungodliness and put those things away from us and be ready. Be ready to give a defense. Be ready to speak up. Be ready to teach the truth. Now, this seeking after God, his righteousness, and his kingdom really kind of leads us into the next thing. It's going to help us renew our zeal, and that's just restructuring our lives and way of thinking. You go to Titus chapter 2, uh, there's uh, the conclusion of verse 12, and it's teaching us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust. We should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age. That we are to, to live a, a sober and righteous and godly life. That's the way we are to live. And, you know, that is a change from the way we used to be. From the way we were before we were Christians. Uh, from the way we were when we were living in sin. That now we are to live a, a life that is renewed and has a renewed zeal for doing what's right. For living for Christ. You know, we've been, we have been saved uh, by grace through faith. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse Verse 8. But we are called to be to be sober, to be holy. First Peter chapter 13 and uh first Peter chapter 1, verses 13 through 16. We are to live sober lives. We are to be holy people. Uh, we are to live lives uh, that are for God all the time. And that reminds us of Galatians 2 and verse 20. We're to live those lives uh, for God continuously uh, every day of our lives. The things that, that were, which should drive us and motivate us are things not of the works of the flesh, but things that are found in the fruit of the Spirit, Galatians 5 and verses 22 and 23. We should see the fruit of the Spirit, and that is the, that is how we are to be. We are to live uh, as those things. We are to continue to grow and develop and to just restructure continuously our lives to be more like God, to have our thinking to be more like God. Now, when I think about growth, I think about 2 Peter in chapter 1 and verses 5 through 8, where we see, you know, as your faith, virtue, virtue, knowledge, this continual growth process that happens, that we are to continually be trying to, to grow and to restructure our lives continuously to be more like God. And so if we want to renew our zeal, let's restructure our lives and our way of thinking. And let's honestly, let's reclaim something. Let's reclaim our hope. See, the world likes to take our hope away from us, or at least they want to try. And sometimes we want to let them because, you know, we let all the, the sin and the worldliness and all this darkness of, the, of, of our life, you know, kind of weigh us down. And let's reclaim our hope. Let's grab hold of it because this hope is sure. This hope is amazing. We found in Christ Jesus. Titus chapter 2 and verse 13 says, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, uh, Jesus Christ. You know, we have a hope as Christians. We have a hope um, as his people that we're going to be saved. We have a hope in his return and him coming and take us home and take us to heaven to live with him forever. And we need to hold on to that hope. We need to recognize that we're living by a living hope. First Peter chapter 1 and verse 3. We have a living hope in Christ Jesus. We need to understand, uh, as we read John chapter 14 and verses 1 through 6, that Jesus is coming back. He's gone to prepare a place for us. And if he's going to prepare, he, he's, he's coming back. 
He's going to come back and he's going to take us home so that we can be with him, so that he can take us to the Father. And these are things that we need to be assured of, that we need to be convicted of, that we need to let that hope be something that motivates us through life. You think about that assurance and conviction, or think about the faith that is described in Hebrews chapter 11, there in verse 1, you know, that we have assurance, that we have conviction, that we have this in Christ Jesus. We just need to have that faith. And so we turn to 1 Peter and chapter 3 and verse 15, and we see that we are to always be ready. Be ready to, to give a defense. Be ready uh, to tell people why we have hope. For the hope that is in us, we're to do so with meekness and fear. And that is the way that we are to live. We are to be ready. We are to need to reclaim our hope. And this is going to give us such great zeal, such great zeal for God. If we're zealous for him, we're going to hold on to that hope. We're going to use that hope. And that hope is going to motivate us and strengthen us every day of our lives. And lastly today, we just want to simply just say, we need to renew our zeal. We've talked about, you know, reminding ourselves of God and, and of his love and rejecting ungodliness and worldly lust. We just we talked about restructuring our lives and our way of thinking and even reclaiming our hope. But lastly, just simply put, we need to renew our zeal. You know, that we need, renew that energy that we have for God, that service that we want to uh, and to passionately serve him with. First Kings chapter 19, verses 10 through 14. You see Elijah uh, there, and he says that he is, you know, jealous for the Lord, that he is zealous. You see this passion, this boiling over, this eager desire that he had to serve uh, God. Elijah was a very passionate servant of God, uh, and he demonstrated that over and over and over again. Paul in Romans chapter 10 in verse 2, he wanted, he wanted Israel to be zealous for God. He wanted them to come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. He wanted them to be saved and to follow after God with, with the same passion that so many people tried to persecute Paul with. He wanted them to take their passion and to give it to Christ and to serve him daily. And that's what we should want for the rest of the world too. Not just Jew or Gentile, but the whole world. We should want all people to come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ and to also be zealous. Be zealous as God's people are to be zealous. Be zealous for good works. Let's read once again Titus chapter 2 and verse 14. Who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works. If that doesn't give us motivation and zeal, I don't know what will. Because when we look at the, listen to this verse, that Christ Jesus gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from every lost deed that who did that we did, that every lost deed that we participated in and purify. He's gonna wipe the slate clean. He's gonna make us clean once again. He's gonna purify us for himself, his own special people. We get to be God's people. We get to be his. He is coming to take us home. And so what does he want us to do? He wants us to be zealous, to be zealous for good works, to be zealous for doing what is right and what is righteous before him. And so today, let's strive to renew our zeal. Let's remind ourselves of who God is. Let's reject all the worldliness and sin that is out there. Let's restructure our lives and way of thinking to be more for God. Let's reclaim that hope that we have in Christ Jesus, and let's renew our zeal for God. Today, let's renew ourselves in our zeal and live a life pleasing before God.